Hi, welcome back to Roseburg Speaker and Storytellers. Members, thank you for always showing up. You don't know how you add the quality to this club, to all our meetings. I hope you know, because it's so much. Supporting each other, supporting our friends, witnessing every one of us growing and learning that's just amazing. Let's get started. Everybody is a Toastmaster. Everybody is a Toastmaster. Everybody is from here. Alia is like uh, our member, you know. So let's just start it. And Mr. President, it's your time. You're not going to sing? Man, you know. Welcome everybody, another meeting of Roseburg Speakers and Storytellers. As you all know, this is going to be a special meeting. As Aliyah and I talked about earlier, the one great thing about Toastmasters is we always get to learn. It doesn't matter how much you know or think you know, you can always learn more. And I guarantee that all of us are going to walk away today and be better evaluators. So at this point, I am going to turn this meeting over to Amanda, who is going to facilitate our evaluation workshop. Thank you very much indeed, Tiger. And it's lovely to see you all here today. So, evaluations. These are really important and we're going to learn lots of good stuff today. I'm going to start with sharing what I know about evaluating. And then we're going to have two speakers who are going to show us how to do a speech. Then we have two evaluators for each speaker and we have a general discussion from the floor after each speaker. So plenty of chance for all of us to give some feedback to the speakers. So I'm gonna start with a question. What is evaluation? Ayu, tell us what evaluation is please in one sentence. Can you do that for us? Say something to one sentence, yes. Say, uh, sub help somebody to improve. Excellent, excellent is exactly. It's feedback to help our speaker improve. And why is it important? I'm going to ask Michelle this. Can you tell us briefly why is evaluation so important evaluation is important well it's very important one of the reasons is that it helps to focus on areas that could be improved and then to appreciate and affirm areas that are already being done well excellent thank you michelle so it's both to make sure we know what was done well and why and what needs some improvement. And you know, as speakers, we're our own worst critics because we berate ourselves for not doing a good speech. And the funny thing is that all of us have potential to be brilliant speakers and all of us show promise. So if we take the feedback that we get given by from our fellow Toastmasters, we can only get better. Remember all of us, even the newbies are entitled to their opinion on a speech. So don't worry if you don't feel you're experienced enough or worthy enough to give feedback to a speaker, you are. Sometimes new ears and eyes can give really good feedback to a speaker who's been doing this for a long time. So we don't worry about whether you're right or wrong, your opinion matters. Like speaking, evaluating, I'm going to share my screen here. Oh, oh, sorry. Like speaking, evaluation is a learnt skill and we can all get better. We just have to practice and do it more often. 
if we do evaluations on a regular basis, we can only get better. So how do we go about giving a good evaluation? There are a couple of things that we have to consider. The first to me that's important is that an evaluation is a mini speech. It has to have a beginning, a middle and an end. And we can do this in different ways, but the easiest way to remember how to do this is to start off at the beginning, acknowledging the speaker and thanking them for something that they've done well. We can also acknowledge the president and the rest of the guests. This gives us a chance to think about what we're going to say in our evaluation. But we start off with something positive. And then the middle bit, the body of our evaluation is either two commendations, two mentions of what was done well, and one recommendation if you go deep, or we can do slightly shallower ones, three commendations, maybe two recommendations. It's up to you how you fix that middle part of your speech. And the end should be a summary, a summary of what you've said very briefly, ending on a positive note. I've put here at the bottom that a contest is different. We have to have a summary for a contest evaluation. It counts for 15 marks. So if you get used to doing it in your speech evaluations at club, you will be in the right frame of mind to make sure you do it in a contest. The next thing we come to is recommendations. As Michelle said, recommendations are important so that we can find something to improve in our speech. And my first point here is that we do at least one recommendation for the speaker. Giving a whitewash, telling them they're fantastic, this was a brilliant speech and it was beautiful language and this was done well and I've got no recommendations is shortchanging the speaker in my view. I think we need to find at least one recommendation for our speaker. It's good to know what you've done well in a speech so that you can continue to do that and so that all of us realize this is good practice, but recommendations are vital. And then how to set your evaluation is up to you. There are a number of different structures that you can use. Toastmasters International suggests the sandwich method where we commend by saying something that we like, recommend by saying something that needs attention and finish on a commendation what was good. But I suggest that you do two commendations followed by two recommendations and then end on a commendation. It is up to you. If you go deeper, obviously you take more time to do that part of your evaluation. Or you can use what they use up in uh, my other club in Calgary, they say stars and wishes. These are the strengths of the, of the evaluation. These are the things that shine brightly. And these are what I wish to see in your speech go, speeches going forward. And that's the same as strengths and suggestions. So let me look, if I'm giving an evaluation on some, I might say the strengths that IU displayed in her speech were so-and-so. And then when I come down to my recommendations, I say, I would suggest that IU tries whatever it is. And then my favorite is the what I saw, what I heard and what I felt. And in this particular format, you can give a commendation and a recommendation for each of those particular aspects of the speech. When we come down to giving our commendations and our recommendations, I strongly suggest that when you say you liked something about a speech, that you say why it had an impact on you, why you liked this so much. So I might say, IU showed really good vocal variety and that kept us engaged, it kept us interested in what she was saying. And with recommendations, which is what we are, the suggestions to make a speech better, that we tell us, tell everybody why we think it could be improved and demonstrate how to do that. I think it's important, if I was telling IU Perhaps you could use more vocal variety. 
I would take perhaps two sayings, or two sentences out of the speech and do it in with more vocal variety. I might show surprise, excitement, or I might, if she's talking about whispering about something she's fearful of, I might demonstrate how to do that so that it gives more impact. And moving on to what we comment on. It's really important that we talk about what the speech was about and what and how it was delivered. Now, I'm not saying that we should be doing a pricey of what the speaker said, because we've all heard the speech. What we want to know is how the speech was put together. This is content. If the speech flows well, if it has a good structure, if it's easy to follow, it's obviously a better speech. And so those two things, flow and structure, are important to look at. We also can look at how the speech develops and the transitions between the different points. If it's clunky and doesn't make sense and doesn't necessarily flow easily, that jars with the audience and sometimes we're lost or distracted. So it's important to think about whether the speaker used descriptive language in their stories, whether they had a call to action at the end, if it's perhaps a speech that is about uh, motivating somebody. The message is important too. And how that message is reinforced is also important. If we are talking about an informational speech, giving lots of facts and figures, I think it's a good idea to tell us, to tell your audience where you got your facts from. This shows you to be an expert or to be knowledgeable on the subject. So that's important. If we are looking at rhetorical devices, we can mention the fact that the speaker used a question at the beginning of their speech to engage with the audience. Whether they used a quote to end to reinforce the message, all of these things are important. So those really are what we're looking at in the content of a, of a speech. We don't necessarily have to agree with the speaker. If Ram tells us a story about his religious beliefs and I disagree completely, if that doesn't matter. What I need to say is, maybe a short sentence, I don't have the same beliefs, but I found his speech interesting and for these reasons that I found it interesting. We don't necessarily have to agree with the content. We're making comment on how it was delivered. Which moves me on to the delivery section. So the things to look out in a good delivery is confidence, authenticity, good vocal variety. And why are these important? Well, if the speaker's confident, it's easy to see. Sometimes the speaker is very nervous. They look down, they're holding their hands, they're pausing a lot, they're umming and eyeing, they're not making eye contact. Mention this because there are lots of things that we can do to help the speaker contain their nerves. We're also looking for authenticity. We want believability. If someone's telling a story about pain and suffering and they're smiling, they're not authentic. We need to show with our bodies, with our faces, what we are saying so that the words match our gestures and, and our faces really. And Emotion, drama, animation really drives the speech, makes good tension, makes us look forward to the next paragraph. So we're looking for some animation, some emotion in a speech. Pauses too, very important. We can pause to, to let the audience take in what we're saying, and we can pause for dramatic effect. If I'm telling a story about being upstairs in the house and hearing the footsteps on the stairs, we might say, oh, 
and I could hear those footsteps coming, creak, creak of the stairs, a pause, and then the door burst open. So we can use pauses in different ways. And what I'm suggesting is that if any of these things in delivery or in content are visible in the speech, that's a commendation for you. If they're missing from a speech, that's a recommendation. So if somebody's speaking with a very monotonous voice like I used to and a lot of South Africans do, suggest that the speaker writes the speech with some vocal variety in there. Talk about shouting at someone or talk about whispering something else. So these, if the things are missing, this is a good point to make for a recommendation. A few more things that we need to consider are, well, I think they're important. Toastmasters now tells us to speak directly to the speaker. I think this has pros and cons. I think that we should address the speaker and say, thank you for your good speech, Paul. And then as we're speaking about the commendations and the recommendations, we go to the third person. And the reason I say that is that if we're speaking, if the evaluator only speaks to their speaker, the rest of us are excluded from that learning. So I think we should be saying, did you notice how Paul did this particularly well or how are you lacked emotion when she was speaking? Because if, we're, if we address our evaluation to all of us, we can share the learning. We're all involved in hearing what could be done better and what was done well. Now, another thing that's really important is timing. In a club meeting, less so, some of us just like to speak and we go a bit over time. But in a contest, if you go over the time, you are disqualified. So think about the timing. An evaluation is two to three minutes and we get 30 seconds grace period after that. So I am suggesting you start your evaluation with the commendations and by the time the amber light comes on you should be doing your recommendations which gives you enough time to demonstrate to the speaker what you mean by your recommendation and then to get to your summary at least by the red light it only gives you 30 seconds when you see the red light so you've got to make sure that you know what 15 seconds speaking feels like and what 30 seconds speaking feels like. For all of us, it's different. You need to work out how many sentences you can fit into 15 seconds and 30 seconds so that you can fit your summary and your end of your evaluation into that time so that you don't go over the time. And the last thing, which I think is important, is matching the tone of your evaluation to that of the speaker. So Tiger's going to give us a humorous speech this afternoon, this morning. I'm hoping it's going to be humorous, but that's the plan. And so I would hope that the evaluators bring some levity to their evaluations. You can keep those light, you can smile. If it's a serious speech, don't do the smiling. Don't make jokes because it diminishes the seriousness of, this, of the subject matter and keep that serious if you're doing a, an evaluation of a serious speech. That is, oh, let me move forward. I've put my last slide as the evaluation contest judges ballot. It shows you where the points are given, analytical quality, there are 40 marks. For recommendations, 30 marks. So if you give no recommendations, you're scuppered really. Technique, 
15 marks, how you deliver your evaluation and the summation, as I've said before, gets you 15 marks. So I would go on to Toastmasters International site, download that ballot paper for yourself, read the back, which explains the criteria um, for you. So that in a nutshell is really what evaluation is about. It's about giving value to your speaker and giving your opinion. That's all. Quite simple. Don't be afraid of giving your feedback to your speaker. The more you practice, the better you will be and the better value your speaker gets in, in their evaluation. Are there any questions? Federico. I have one question, Amanda. Um, what is your technique to match the tone of the speaker? Because I will say that that's the hardest thing to me, especially imagine you have a humorous speaker and you are terrible cracking any kind of joke. But <laughs> it's a case. You can smile. You know, not, not all of us have kissed the Blarney Stone like Tiger. It is, you know, we can't, we can't all be funny but we can show that we've enjoyed it. And a smile will show uh, visually. And also when you smile, your voice changes. Your voice changes and it becomes softer, more gentle. So bear that in mind. If sometimes somebody gives a really serious speech and then the evaluator comes bouncing on, I love that speech and I thought it was fun. You know, it, it can be very jarring and almost disrespectful to the speaker if they have a, have a serious subject. So think about that a little bit. Um, as I say, you can't always be funny, but Federico, you're funny. You're, you're a funny man. I've heard you give some very funny lines. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else got a question? Um, hi, Amanda, I have questions. This is Rebecca. Hello, Rebecca. Sorry, I can't turn on my camera now. Uh, my question, I have two. One, how if the one that we evaluate is a seasoned Toastmasters, and then um, we're, not, we're not that his level yet, and what point that we can, um, you know, say to him, because he's already really good. So what, what good evaluation that we can give to um, seasoned Toastmasters? Okay, um, this is where a lot of people get frightened. They don't want to evaluate somebody who's experienced. But you know, us experienced Toastmasters, we're Teflon coated. We've heard many evaluations and we're, we want to help evaluators get their skills honed too. So don't worry about that. Just try to come up with a recommendation. And I said before, new ears, new eyes, can sometimes pick up something that our club members have just got used to. If I'm fiddling with my hair, my club members are used to seeing me do this, whether it irritates them or not. And a new member might suggest, leave your hair alone. Don't touch your hair, don't pick your nose. You know, it might be something simple like this, but it will be really useful for your, your speaker. So don't worry about that. Just try to think of, think of the list that I gave you for content and delivery. What is missing there is a recommendation for your speaker. And how you come up with it is up to you. Okay. And, 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 and the second okay, question is, yes. How about if the one that we evaluate, uh, they don't accept um, our evaluation? How should we react? Uh, because I ever have a, I'm a VP in my club and I share her the evaluate, uh, evaluation feedback from the evaluator. And then um, she said that, oh, I cannot accept the evaluator give me this um, two point of this. So how should, if it's I'm the evaluator, how should I react on that? Or what is the okay. best way to, 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 um, to, to, to give uh, feedback on this? So 
all of us speakers can take the feedback on board or we can decide that it's not useful for us. We don't, we shouldn't go back to the evaluator to say that's not valid. What we should do is work out in our heads. Let me try this. If I don't think it works, that's fine. We don't have to take everything um, on board and, and do exactly what our evaluators say. Sometimes it's not as useful as other times. We're all learning. So as a speaker, we should just be accepting that our evaluator has tried to come up with something to say and take it or leave it really, okay. if that helps. Yes, thank you, Amanda. Okay. And other Rebecca. Okay, um, Amanda, under the, under the content uh, that uh, you showed us, you, ha you had their rule of three. I don't know if I missed it. What is the rule of three? Okay, it's a device that Toastmasters love to use. Three subjects, three paragraphs, three points always work well. And we can use that in humor, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, three is enough for us to take on board. More than that tends to be too much and Toastmasters love it. So if you mention that they've used the, the, the trope of three, that's a good commendation to use. Okay, if we have no more questions, we're going to move on to the next stage. And that is putting this into practice. So we're going to have two speakers now to give us speeches. And our first speaker, who's going to be evaluated, let me see, by Kunang and by Yasmin today, is Taya McCandy. And his speech is his humorous speech entry, five to seven minutes. And the title of his speech is, let me see where it is, Earn Your Wings, Tiger McCandy. Unmute yourself, please, Tiger. I am an angel. Don't get me started about the fact that I don't have wings. It's a really sore spot with me. It turns out that God does not have a sense of humor, especially when it comes to gambling on British soccer. So 65 years ago, almost 65 years ago, I was given a very difficult human in order to earn my wings back. He was born Donald, but his parents named him Tiger at age two. Now, let me tell you something. A name is important. Donald can be a very difficult name. And if you follow Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. But Tiger, that is capital T for trouble. And the kid felt like he had to live up to this name. At age three, he's on his little red wagon, going like a bat out of hell, right down a steep hill into the forest. Thanks to me, the wagon got destroyed. All the kid had was a few stitches. Speaking of stitches, over the next seven years, this kid accumulated three dozen stitches, bike accidents, running into a grocery store counter, playing tag with his brother, falling out of a moving car. You should have seen the look on a woman's face. She's driving, she hits the brakes, here's this kid in the road, and all of a sudden the kid's gone. Thanks to me. The teenage years were even worse. Got his license within a week, he got his dad's car in an accident. 
fell through the ice on a dare. I had to call in some serious favors on that one. It took three of us to take his frozen body out of the water and throw him up on the shore. <sighs> Concussion, playing football. Very first play of the game. Bam, gets hit in the head. Completely knocks him silly. It's a concussion. Back in those days, we just called it getting his bell rung. He was completely out of it. Last play of the game, he scores a winning touchdown. Big hero. Everyone's happy. Next morning, he's sitting at the breakfast table. And his dad's like, wow, that was awesome. You scored a winning touchdown. I did? I mean, I mean, yeah, that was great. No recollection whatsoever. The highlight of his athletic career, no memory whatsoever of it. That's my guy. Don't even get me started on love. Ay, ay, ay. I've been using up angel dust like crazy for this guy. When it comes to love, I had to call in several favors from the love department. Michael finally cut me off. It started out with Gina at 16. What a lovely girl. Fortunately for her, after she got rid of him, she met a guy and she's been married, I'm happy to say, for 40 years now. It took us 31 years to get this guy married off. And after 25 years of marriage, what can I say? Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters guests, if you know this guy, can you please help me out? I've used up all my angel dust. I've used up all my favors. And this guy still has 20 plus years to go. Oh, sorry. I'm not supposed to tell you that. You know, no one knows their time and all that. Now, the ladies over in the empathetic department gave me this pillow. They're so sweet. So I can take this and go. Because I'm so fed up with this guy. <sighs> My final request is, humans, he's all your problem now. If you know him, help him out. I'm done. I'm out of here. Back to you, Miss Mortal, Contest Chair, Toastmaster, whatever the heck you are. Thank you very much indeed, Tiger. And you certainly amused us there, given our evaluators lots to think about. Ram will put the timings in the chat for us so that we can get on with the next stage, which is our second speaker. And our second speaker, speaker is Shilpa. She is doing her level two introduction to mentoring from her presentation mastery path and her speech is entitled Speed and Direction. Please welcome Shilpa. This is a ball. It needs two things to reach its desired destination. It needs speed, it needs direction. Imagine this ball as you, me, or anyone who wants to reach their desired goal. What are the two things it needs to reach its goal? Any guesses? Hmm? Yes, it needs speed, it needs direction. The speed is determined by you yourself. The speed and the guidance, the direction, is provided by your mentor. Madam Toastmaster, dear club members, and most welcome guests, my speech today would be my journey, my perspective on mentorship. As you all know, the buzzword in Toastmasters is mentorship. If there was ever a list of the most used phrases in Toastmasters, the top of the list would be, that was a good speech. The second on the list would be, what a great meeting. 
not far behind on this list would be. My mentor helped me with this. My mentor helped me with that. Now, don't think I'm joking, but yes, I was one of the few people who did not know about the benefits and the power of mentorship. People like me, we have to determine our own speed and our own direction. In my opinion, mentorship is an American or a Western phenomenon. In East, we are used to, we aren't used to teachers handing out stickers or hugs at every little thing we do. Achieve appreciation is hard to come by and trophies need to be earned. They are not presented to each and every member on the team. Until a few, few years back, I naively equated mentorship with favoritism by the teachers. Thankfully, my perspective on mentorship broadened. I came to know about the power of the continuous supportive direction they provide. Only after I heard the speeches of on this topic in my Toastmasters club, immediately I knew that my speed needed some direction. I approached a speaker par excellence in my club to be my mentor. I thought I got it right. As it turns out, the best speakers are not always the best mentors. He did not have the time or the commitment to be a mentor. But the few nuggets of wisdom he gave me still remain with me. He taught me the glove technique of evaluation. And he told me, there is only so much that the ear of a audience can take. So Shilpa, slow down. He taught me voice, he taught me a lot many things, but then I have to find another mentor. I got a career mentor through my university, Georgia Tech. This time, there was lack of communication and there was lack of experience on both these sides. It was not a good fit because he, had, he was just starting out and he saw life through a different window and through different lenses than mine. After these two experiences, I had built a wall around me regarding mentorship. My guards finally came down when I heard the stories and amazing experiences by my friends, Amy, Nizar. I heard stories of Vicky on mentorship and many others in this club. I realized that there can be hiccups, there can be challenges on the path to find the right mentor. But then eventually you can find a right fit for yourself. I think it's time to give my speed some direction. I'm on my quest to find my mentor again. What should I do now? I turn to you all, the people I admire so much, the people who teach me so many things. And I ask you, Amanda, Tiger, Michelle, Vicky, or anyone else who can see the potential in me who can see some speed in me and is ready to give an odd ball like me, some guidance, some direction. Therefore, I ask you, will you be my mentor? I'll wait for a yes in the chat box. Thank you and have a great day. Well done, Shilpa. Really insightful about mentoring, good and bad. And I love your glove technique details. Thank you for that. Okay. 
Now is the time for our evaluators to come to the front and give their opinion on the speakers and what was done well and what could be done even better. And our first evaluator today is going to be Kunang. And Kunang is going to give some feedback to Tiger. So please, let's welcome Kunang. Thank you, Amanda. Yes, I'm glad to be a mentor for Tiger. This is my first time, and Tiger is an experienced guy of public speaking. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, my feedback is uh, his voice is good, his body language is also good, and eye contact really good. Uh, one suggestion recommendation is his video, his sketches is feel too good. So he, you can put yourself in the middle of the camera so everybody can see him in a full body. Yes, <laughs> his face and the camera is full, so it's good to see. And the last point, thank you for his attention of the speech and the funny speech. Thank you. Back to you, Amanda. Well done, Kinang, for your first evaluation. It isn't easy, but you did a very good job. You noticed so many things that Tiger did well there. So thank you for that. Our second evaluator for Tiger will be Yasmin. Yasmin, your turn. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's indeed a pleasure to evaluate an angel, not a tiger speech, I guess. What did we all enjoy? It's the dialogue, the dialogue between an angel and us. So in the seven minutes or a little lesser than five minutes, we got to know everything about this guy called Tiger, right from his childhood to his schools, to his marriage, to all the incidents he had, not only that, even how long he's gonna live because the angel shared everything with us. Well done, Tiger. Well done for the innovative way of creating this dialogue and creating humor while you were presenting the dialogue. So I give you full marks and you really shined in your way of presenting in a very nicer, you know, gestures and not only gestures, all the proper usage of props, even the angel's dust. So we know how the dust of angel looks like. Perfect visualize, visualization of your wordings. So we could visualize your, you as an angel and about everything about this guy, Tiger. My recommendations. It was a dialogue, so it was supposed to be two ways. We heard you, but it would have been very nice if we would have also got the chance to react to you. So if you would have somewhere included space or created space for us to come in back. For example, you could have towards your end, you could have just said the question, what do you think as an angel I would do? Sort of close my eyes or quit the job? It's just an example. You could have been more creative and engaged us. Over and all, it was a fantastic dialogue, a fantastic humorous speech, and we all enjoyed it through you, Tiger, as an angel, as we learned about you. Thank you, and back to you, Ms. Amanda Devaluate. Thank you, Yasmin. Really insightful uh, comments, and it showed that both you and Kunang really listened to the speaker in order to give back your comments. So thank you, both of you. Now, the floor will be open to all of us. And I'm going to ask Ram to put the lights on at three, four and five for the general feedback from the audience. And we're going to start with, anybody got 
a commendation. What did you really love about Tiger's speech? Yes. Michelle. Thank you. Tiger, you use the pause so powerfully. And this is good in any speech. It is essential in humor. And you just did it. You would say something, you would pause, and then you would say the, I wouldn't call it a punchline, but you, you would deliver a, a line or two that was just so effective. And then you would pause again afterwards. So really powerful. Back to you, Amanda. Thanks, Michelle. Anybody else with something that you really loved about Tiger's speech? I'll, I'll go then. I thought his stories were fantastic. If we want to get a point across, a story is the best way. And to be able to deliver stories that are short, sharp, but to the point is a real skill. So Tiger, some of them moved me, some of them made me laugh, some of them surprised me, but I love the stories. Anybody else with a commendation? for Tiger. What about his gestures? I love the gestures. We punched himself on the, fa on the face. He was brilliant. Um, visual, as, as Yasmin said, visual cues, especially when we're in a box like this, are really important. And, and if the gestures underline what the speaker is saying, it's doubly effective. So, you know, to, if you hadn't done the gesture or perhaps you'd done the gesture later when, when you weren't saying those words, it might not have been so effective. But to do the two together really reinforces what you're, what you're trying to say. Amanda? Filter. Yes, I would like to say that the first thing that pulled the audience in Tiger's speech was the halo on his head. So if you have a prop or something that catches the audience attention in the beginning, it's a very good start. Yeah, I agree. I thought that halo was very good. Sometimes it moved around. Is it a, it's not a, it's not a wire that you've got down the back of your t-shirt, is it? It's a, one of the, so sometimes when you move too quickly, it moved around. So just be aware of that. Maybe watch your your uh, speech afterwards and you can see where you could slow down or m make the movement um keep your halo um as the angel and anybody for a final point about the strengths in tiger's speech yeah Amy, yes, thank you um well, I, I just, I thought the humor was great. It was really dry, it was satirical. And it, I, I thought uh, Tiger delivered that really well, but how he was, the heaviness, the weight on him, uh, it just worked really well together. And that, and the way he threw himself around and the heaviness of this burdened angel. Yeah, so I just, I thought that really tied in nicely and worked very well. Yeah, thanks, Amy. Physical humor is something we don't often see here on Zoom and in, in our speeches. And that's really important. The words are important, but when we, when we make those big gestures, they, they can be hysterical. So well done, Tiger. So let's look at what Tiger could do to improve his speech, if anything, Tiger. Let's see if someone's brave enough to come up with a suggestion for you. Amanda? Yeah, Michelle, thanks. Yes, Tiger, I, as I mentioned already, I loved your speech. One area you might want to watch is at certain points, the screen was almost cutting off your chin. So like, look at Amanda right now. She has this gap between her face and the bottom of the screen. Watch your recording and see in your case, sometimes you were right there. So uh, some hand gestures were not totally visible. And of course your, your charming chin was sometimes not visible. <laughs> so watch for that. <laughs> Back to you Amanda. 
Michelle. Yes, it's a charming chin. We, we do need to practice what our gestures look like. So I would go have a, a, a Zoom meeting just by yourself and see how far your hands can reach to make sure you make maximum use of that, that square we, we get given on Zoom. Tiger. You mentioned about the halo. There were some movements I intentionally did very quickly because yeah. just to demonstrate that you, on this media, you cannot move too quickly. Like with the punching of the pillow, you know, those kinds of things you just, you can't get away with on this, unfortunately. And the other thing is there were times where I was speaking too fast. I mean, I, I knew that. And there are, certain, there are people here that will tell you, I, you told me that many times, Melvin and I have had that conversation. There were times where I was speaking too quickly, especially for people that um, use English as a second language. So just self-analysis. Yeah, and that's always very good. I did ask you to keep the speech short. So fair enough that you try to squeeze it all in, but I know that you'll give more pauses between in when you're doing it in the contest. So. Well done, Tiger. Thank you, everybody, for contributing to that group session. I think Tiger will definitely benefit from that. So thank you, all of you. And now we're going to move on to the evaluations for Shilpa. Shilpa needs some feedback too. And I'm going to ask Ram again if you could give the evaluation uh, lights, please, for our evaluators. Our first evaluator to give back some feedback to our lovely Shilpa is Melva. Melva, up to you. All right. Thanks, Amanda. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to Lotus Masters and their guests. I'm Melva. Today, I will evaluate Shilva's speech. Shilva, congratulations. I really do love your speech. You tell your personal story, empower mentor. I do agree with you. Without mentor, we cannot be better than now. And then actually three things. I do love your speech. One thing, you tell your, per your personal story, empower mentor. And then the second, your glove means gesture, language, organization, voice, emotions are good. Oh my God, you are you are good. You are like storytellers. Your gesture, your voice so clear. You speak so slowly. For me, as a beginner, I can understand what you said, and it's clearly. Well done, Silva. And then one thing I like. It's funny, I think you said, oh, will you be my mentor? If you want to be my mentor, put on chat. Oh my God, it's really funny. It's, it's funny, I think. I don't find in bad in your speech, but today I will, oh, I will give you a challenge. Um, one, one, just want to give you challenge. I want you more uh, expression like uh, intonation. I mean, intonation when you get bad. I mean, said like at the time you said, um, I'm the one who didn't believe in mentor. You can uh, set, settle down your voice to, to down. And when you're happy, you, you can make a loud voice intonation i mean like you you can maintain your intonation just that in summary overall your speech is good really well done thanks back to you amanda melva really good uh, evaluation for shilpa especially coming up with such a good recommendation for vocal variety well done indeed and now moving on to our second evaluator. And this is Rebecca. Rebecca, some feedback from you, please. Thank you, Amanda. Um, Shilpa, I really enjoyed your speech. 
it helped us, uh, you know, it helped me look back to where, to what I'm doing now being in HR and true enough, um, you said two things that is on point. Number one, you said that um, when you mentioned about having your guard down and then going through um, hiccups on the road, I could definitely relate to it. Now, when you um, started with the ball, that was a good visual for, for all of us. You explained about the speed of the ball being determined by ourselves and the direction of where that ball is going being determined by your mentor. It is an eye opener because a lot of people would not look at, look at it at that point, but I really like that because it, it made your speech very clear at the direction also of where your speech was going. Now, uh, the flow of your speech was very smooth. You included humor and uh, talking about your personal experiences. It was very informative and you had a detailed uh, account of it. And you helped us put ourselves in your position. And you showed you were very comfortable in giving your speech and your pauses was on point. Um, I do have a little recommendation. Um, maybe um, your voice control could, you know, you could, you could improve on that because sometimes when you get too excited, you know, and we're listening really well, it, sometimes it's hard to match it, you know? And then um, your hand gestures was, was on point, was really good. And uh, it showed us the energy and the, and the uh, control that you had with delivering this speech. You, I want to thank you that you helped, you helped us uh, focus on certain things and uh, show the importance on being, on having a good mentor. And I liked it when you said at the end, will you be my mentor? I also like that. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rebecca. Very good points that you've made there. And I think both Melva and Rebecca will have given you some food for thought there, Shilpa. So let's open this to everybody. And we'll start with what we thought Shilpa did particularly well. Again, timing Ram for three, four, and five, please. So who say who thinks that Shilpa did an amazing job today? And why? Tiger. First of all, before uh, making that comment, both evaluations, it showed that both of the evaluators listened to, to your lecture and to be able to apply something that quickly, is, that was impressive. The thing I like about Shilpa is her articulation. I think Malva alluded to that. I understand every single word she says and, and she has an accent and I'm hearing impaired. So oftentimes with an accent for me, it's difficult, but with Shilpa, I hear every single word and I really appreciate that. Yeah, I agree, Tiger. It's beautifully modulated and the pauses are, are very strong. Michelle. Sorry, <laughs> yes, I was, I was busy typing something to Tiger. But anyway, I love the call to action at the end. Uh, Melva's already commented on it, but I really loved it. It personally hit me. And in fact, I've been busy messaging Shilpa about it. So that was a very powerful ending. It tied up everything from the beginning. So great job there, Shilpa. Yeah, I agree. Anybody else with a accommodation for Shilpa? Amy, yes, thank you. 
Um, I, I really liked that Chilpa showed like her honesty on how she struggled to understand it and she showed her vulnerability on how she didn't have great experiences before but she's and then she tied it in with the analogy of the like drive and the force with the ball and tied it back and then yeah had the courage to do that call um to action at the end so I just I really like what she brought the the personal vulnerability and everything the honesty that she brought to a speech just made it um much more relatable uh, yeah. thank you Amy and and that's the point I was making about authenticity we can see when a when a speaker is being true and speaks from the heart and it's good to comment on that Kunang, you had something you wanted to say? Yes, I want to thank you, Shilpa, that she gave me a great speech. I can hear her well. And I remember for her, from her speech is that find the right mentor that fit to yourself. Yes, yep. my personal, very simple. And someone who can see the potential in you. So thank you, Shilpa. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kenang. Exactly. So now let's think about some, some recommendations for Shilpa. What could she have done? Federico. Shilpa, there is one advice that I can give you. You can buy one of these ones and it's white. And why am I saying this is, is because, well, in Europe, I would say it's darker and when you don't turn on the light, it might look like this. And you know, in Poland, imagine if I'm, I rotate right now my, my camera, you can still not see anything because it's already dark. And the main idea is that when you have a one that is white, especially white, be careful about that because uh, I honestly, this is a very, bad comment from my side that maybe in English is correctly to say that, but for me, it's a huge lie that people say there are different kinds of white color. There is a white color and there's a warmer white color. That's a lie. There's only white, white, white is white. The other ones are yellow. I, ha I, I was, I, and people lied me. And so just go search for the white ones. These are nice and they will make you more, more ch to shine in the, in the stage. Believe me that when you're doing a sales, a sales speech when you're performing that this is key and i was doing the same with a friend yesterday that I, i'm helping him to record and unfortunately because he don't have a, a, a white one the computer screws his 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 image because if you see the recording when you are appearing because you don't have a very good light then your camera has very low quality and it could have very very good quality but because the light doesn't help you you're almost invisible so I invite you to buy one. It doesn't cost you more than two euros and you will shine better than ever in the stage the next meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Federico. That is, the, <laughs> that is the one recommendation I would have made there because you are now disappearing into the dark. Um, luckily, we could still see you at the beginning of your speech, but just watch the light. Anybody else with a recommendation for Shilpa? No, no more recommendations for you, Shilpa. Oh, one from Tiger. I, I was just going to say, with, with your ability to articulate, if you move in and and back up, sometimes it get really powerful. If you if you move right into the camera on some of the most important things that you said, and then back away, I think that that would add even more to your point. Thank you, Tiger. Yes, so thank you everybody for contributing again to help Shilpa uh, make that speech even more bright to take the mickey out of Federico there and his lighting. Excellent group discussion. I am now going to pass over to our general evaluator who has been listening and watching and is going to give us some feedback. So, Federico, up to you now, Federico. Thank you very much, Amanda, for organizing this event. 
I believe that all the tricks that you have taught us are going to help us to be better evaluators, especially that you focus a lot on the contest. That many times when we speak about evaluation, we give a lot of tricks, but we forget that one of the main things is to go to the contest every year. I enjoy something about India. I think Jasmine already disappeared, but my former manager was from India. And Ram is here too, I'm not sure, but I'm not sure he ever con took, took part in the contest in, in India. And Chilpa, I'm not sure if you ever took part there, but my former manager used to take part there. And he said that everyone went to the contest. It were 40 people in the same room. They throw away the keys and no one could escape from the room. It was very insane. It's, and they were like for eight hours in the room without being able to go out. And that's something that I enjoy about what Amanda did. She highlighted the importance of why we need to do, use these tricks about the, the rule of three and all these small things that we forget easily. And in the end, she come and said, hey, here is, the, here is the evaluation form. Remember it, because if you don't follow it, well, in the, in the contest, you might fail. And I failed multiple times. So I know what does it mean that when you don't follow the rules, you are dead in life. That's something that I enjoy. Then going back, uh, going to the, to the part of the evaluations. I, uh, about Kunan, I believe that she was brave to try to give the first evaluation. It was something good, especially in a, when you're coming to a workshop, when most of people will be afraid to do an evaluation in this moment. You were able to highlight the points from Tiger. What I can advise you is, even if it's add more time, try to reach the minimum flag because you even did very, very small details. And I am pretty sure that in that notebook, there are more things that you didn't say for whatever reason and don't hide them. Try to reach at least the yellow flag because you will be disqualified in the contest. You spoke only for 55 seconds and the minimum from my, let's say memory is 130. So you will have been disqualified. So keep that in mind. Just try to speak a little bit more and add some small details. I'm sure that there are more notes there that you hide for any reason. Then going back to Jasmine, Jasmine was able to highlight a lot of good points about Tiger. However, there is one thing that I would like to generalize about almost everyone, only Rebecca did it minimally, that you generally need to speak in third person when you're giving an evaluation. I'm not sure if this is a general rule, but at least in the District 108, where I have been for five years, if you don't speak in third person and engage everyone who is listening to your evaluation, you will get negative points because of that. They always highlighted that you need, the feedback is not only for the speaker, but for everyone who is listening to. It's like, for example, Tiger did this in a great way and everyone could consider this idea. And this is something that they always tell you in the District 108. So, Keep that in mind, maybe in the district seven where we are located is different, or maybe in the district 59 is different, but generally in my experience is that you need to engage everyone. So I felt that all, this, all the evaluations were too direct to the speaker, which is fine. From my perspective, it, it should be like that. But as they say, you are ignoring the rest of people and if there are 50 or 60 people there, they will feel a little bit uncomfortable because the feedback is for everyone. In then going to, Oh, Melba, Melba came and did a very good evaluation go, going very, I will say, she has changed a lot from her first, for, from her first meetings. I remember she said that she was not able to speak in English at all. And I don't agree with that, to be honest. This is something that she was maybe hiding or trying to say something that is, let's say a little bit misleading because she speaks very well. And she was able to provide a very constructive feedback with everything in detail, giving very good points and taking in consideration the ideas from Amanda. Again, try to remember the part, speak to everyone. And finally with Rebecca, I, I, I really like that you, at least in almost in the end, you try to engage the rest of people, highlighting the points for Chilpa. You were the only one who spoke in third person for a moment before you said the part that, that, that Chilpa is inviting everyone to be her mentor. But I, I, I will say that you were capable of identifying some things. 
even though you are a, a new Toastmaster in, in general, I, I'm still waiting that I want to see you in the contest the next year, Rebecca. So we need like six speeches for, for February or even more, but I expect to see, to see some Rebecca in the contest soon. So generally speaking, I believe that everything went pretty smoothly. Only remember what I said, try to speak to everyone. Some judges will be a little bit more, less kind in, gen in that point. But that's overall what I think. And thank you for the meeting. And thank you very much, Federico, for all of those points to our evaluators. I think everybody did a great job today. Um, it must have been scary for some of you doing it here uh, so soon after the speaker. And I appreciate all of your comments. And thank you for contributing in the, in the general evaluation. I'm going to hand you back to our president. Ty, or do I go to IU first for any notices? IU. Please. Oh, are you saying go to Tiger? Tiger, please. Thank you so much, Amanda. That was excellent. As most of you already know, I'm an educator and that was brilliant. I'm sure all of us will walk away and be better evaluators. I know last week that I walked away being a better table topics presenter, and now I'm going to be a better evaluator. Excellent participation by everybody. I really appreciated that. That was superb. Brilliant, as you British people like to say. <laughs> and with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and close this meeting. Please stick around afterwards. I would love to get some comments from our guests and, of course, also our members. So on three, I'm going to go ahead and close this meeting. One, two, and...